Hey everyone, welcome to Science-Based Fitness. My name is Adam, thanks for checking out the channel. What we have today is the first of our four-part mini-series on the muscles we use in our golf swing. So what we're gonna do today is go over our core muscles. At the end, I'm gonna show a few exercises you can use to actually work these muscles. Along with my degree in exercise science, I'm also certified with Titleist in their Titleist Performance Institute program. This program brings in different fields trying to create better golfers. It brings in healthcare workers, fitness professionals, and golf professionals, all designed to create a better golfer. So with my area of expertise with exercise science, how do we apply exercise science to create a better golfer? Well, let's find out. We're gonna focus on core muscles for this episode and with the amount of rotation seen in a golf swing, we can assume these muscles are going to be relatively important. But before we go to the gym and do a million crunches, we should probably make sure our workouts are emphasizing the most utilized muscles. In order to do that, we need to track down some EMG data and identify what core muscles are the most active during the swing. EMG, or electromyography, is basically an electrode sticker that attaches to a muscle and reads the strength of contraction. And I personally love EMG data. Well, we found a meta-analysis that used 12 studies of golf swing EMG data. This is awesome to find and it's linked in the description if you want to read it on your own. When we look at our abdomen muscles, there's two muscles that we're going to focus on here. One is the rectus abdominis, and this is typically what everyone thinks of when they think of abs. And the second is the external obliques. I'll give you a second to guess on which of these two were most active during the golf swing. Do you have your answer? The answer is the external obliques. The golf swing is broken into multiple phases. In each phase, the external obliques activity is vastly greater than the rectus abdominis which makes sense because the external obliques are responsible for trunk rotation. So how do we apply this data? Well, we don't neglect the rectus abdominis. We develop a more comprehensive plan that incorporates additional external oblique work. But when we talk about core, we can't skip out on talking about the erector spinae muscle. This muscle shown in the image functions to straighten the back and provide side to side rotation. I've seen in my own swing loss of posture when this muscle's fatigued. When looking at the stability it provides, this is understandable. Now we've addressed the importance of these muscles, I wanna do a couple exercises to show you how to work them. Before going any further, I need to mention, if you have any medical reasons you shouldn't be exercising, please don't attempt these. Or if you have any back issues, just check with your doctor before trying these. I'm sure he already loves that you play golf with back pain. Exercise one, Russian twist. There's a lot of different variations to this exercise. What I'd like to do is make sure we develop a 90 degree angle at our knees and at our hips. One of the main things we're trying to help develop with our golf swing in this exercise is disassociating our shoulders from our hips. We don't want your shoulders to keep facing forward and you just rotating the weight side to side. And in this exercise, I used a five pound weight you can use just body weight, or you can use a five pound weight. You can move your way up or down. You can try some of the different variations and see what's best for you. You don't need to go heavy with this. It's more about the control and the engagement of the muscle. Exercise two, Paloff's Press. This is an anti-rotational movement, basically meaning we build stability and strength while resisting movement. We try to engage our muscles and keep our body from rotating back. You can see in the video, I'm squatted maybe four or five inches down. When we press away from the body, this increases the rotational tension. Just remember to hit both sides. Exercise three, Superman. This exercise is another isometric exercise, which means it doesn't require movement, just holding in place. Now, it doesn't look very difficult, but it will fatigue those erector spinae muscles in the back. We act like we're flying like Superman while we lift our feet in the air and our shoulders in the air. We engage our erector spinae muscles. We hold for 30 seconds. Depending on our fitness level, you can maybe go a little longer or maybe a little less. 
I hope everyone liked the video. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for part two where we're going to cover the upper body muscles used in your golf swing. Mm -hmm.